happy Monday Knitters. I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and it is Monday again, which means that this is another brand new episode of New Start Monday Knits. I have got some exciting dishcloth knitting to show you. <laughs> I didn't, dishcloth is, is really the most, most knitting I got done this week. I did a lot of yarn sorting, which cut into my knitting time, but you guys all know that I was kind of on this quest to perfect that garter slip dishcloth pattern. And I think I did it. I almost want to say it's like perfect, but it's probably not perfect, but I really, really like it. So let's do a quick recap because I always start these videos with the finished dish cloth because I always do at least one a week. So let's just backtrack a little bit. A couple of weeks ago, I show you the right side. I played around with this garter slip stitch pattern. So if this is the first video you're seeing, I know you're going to say, oh, Louise, there's a mistake. And you're right. There is right there. This is when I decided that doing an eight row repeat was not like knit night proof because I couldn't keep track of which pattern repeat I was on. So I decided, no, eight rows didn't cut it. So I cast on the week, the next week, I cast on again in some variegated yarn and decided that I would just do four rows and just stack the stitches on the, the four row repeats on top of one another instead of alternating them. That's what the eight row did. This was knit night proof. I did this with a bunch of friends, not a bunch, a small group of friends, and I could do it. But I was happy with the stitch pattern. It met all my criteria that I could do it kind of like in two sittings, like two evenings or a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, I could have it done. It was quick, it was simple, it was easy to, to memorize. I could read my stitches. I didn't have to follow um, a pattern. I didn't have to check off rows. I didn't have to keep track of anything. Almost a win. But then I thought, hmm, do I like my edging? And see right there, I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily just the edging. I think that was just me being, I don't know, a wonky stitch or whatever. But there was no edging on there. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. It's like, it's not bad, right? And for a dishcloth, really, whatever, it'll, it'll work or a spa cloth in the shower, you know, it'll be fine. But I thought, can I perfect that a little better? And you guys all weighed in and there was a lot of comments saying, yeah, like some people said, yeah, you know what? Don't worry. The edge looks fine. It's good. Then some other people said, what about a slip stitch? And slip stitches always do give you a nice edge because you're only actually knitting it every other row so that it gets slipped and then knit on the following row, it, it kind of pulls it up. So it snugs it up and does give you a nice like chain stitch, V stitch up the edge. But I thought, because I've got, how can I show you? This was my cast on. I've got a couple, I don't think you can really tell. There is a couple of rows of garter stitch right there. And I thought, hmm, maybe, wait, did I show you the wrong side again? Look again, there's two rows of garter stitch. And I thought, oh, if I've got garter stitch on the top and the bottom and a slip stitch on the edge, I thought that might bother me. So even though that was a fantastic idea, I decided to go with two garter stitch stitches at the beginning and the end. And look at this, I like it. I really, really like it. I think can I show you? Look at the edge. What do you think? I'm really happy with it. I think it just kind of ties in, just gives it that little tiny skinny edge. It holds it flat. There's no curling. And it just kind of ties in with the top with garter stitch. What do you think? I love it. And I know a couple people asked for the pattern and I said that I would, I would write it up and share it with you once I got the edging figured out. I think I have the edging figured out. So I will write this up and if anybody wants to knit some for yourselves or for gift knitting, cause it's time now, we gotta get in like high gear for gift knitting. Anyways, this is it. I love it. I thought that this was like the end all and be all. I thought I had found the perfect pattern until I started this week's dishcloth. 
And now I'm thinking maybe that is my new favorite. I'm thinking my favorite over this quest for like the perfect pattern. I'm going to see, I'm going to make a group of them. So not necessarily just say there's one pattern, but come up with a handful that I would like. So anyways, I feel like this is a win. I feel like I figured it out. I got the pattern down pat, the edging down pat. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. But I also really like the one I started for this week. And I'll show you that in a minute. Since I was in dishcloth knitting mode, <laughs> I knit two more. I guess I was just in that, oh, I dropped a ball band. Anyways, I was just kind of in that mode. I wanted to get a couple of more apart uh, balls finished. So you can see here, I started two colors. I had a, the blue variegated and that chocolate ombre. These are both Bernat Handicrafter. I just striped them every two rows up here until I ran out of the chocolate ombre. And then I just went with this colorway, which is called Swimming Pool. Aptly named because it does. It looks like waves. It does look like a swimming pool. So anyways, that's done. Two more ball bands are done, which I have here and one that I dropped on the floor. So I am going to put these in my ball band box. When I did a, um, the video on Friday and I showed you the big carrying cake ball that I had bought. Um, yeah, that's fun. Anyway, I got so excited about that. I forgot to show you my ball band box. So I'll quickly show it to you now. Remember I had high hopes back in January getting this filled. Well, I think if I wanted to get it filled, I should have picked a smaller box. <laughs> Maybe that's cheating though, isn't it? But look at, I just love this because it had wildflowers on it. So I thought this has to be my, my ball band box. It is not full, full, but it's got, it's getting a lot in there. Oh, and this is my list. So yeah, so I've just been kind of keeping track, keep by month, kind of clipping them together so I could kind of keep track of them. And you know, if I, kind of lay them around. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. And I can tell you, okay, I'm going to put these two in, except I don't have a paper clip. That's all right. I'll remember, right? Yeah, that's out. Oh, do I have a total? Okay. So my total meters knit for this year is Oh my God, I'm just under 6,000 meters, 5,997 meters, which is probably over 6,000 because I'm pretty sure some of my odd, um, odd bits of dishcloth, I think I forgot because I didn't have, I just had like little balls. I didn't have ball bands. And there again, I thought, oh, I'll remember to weigh them. And I'm pretty sure I forgot. So this, this is an estimate and I'm probably a little bit under, but 6,000 meters. It's a lot of, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of ball bands. So I guess that's pretty good. I guess I won't really know until I keep track for next year and see how I am on, see how I am from year to year. But anyways, 6,000 meters net. That sounds like a lot. Look at that. My dishcloth pile is getting bigger for sure. Do you want to see? Okay. I'll show you. Okay. I want to show you my new dishcloth, but I won't. Not quite yet. The other thing that I worked quite a bit on last week was my latte cake, my Karen cake latte cake. And look, the ball is getting squishier. I love when you can start to see the center of it disappearing. Oh, you want to see? I got quite a bit done. Da, da, da. It's getting long. It is very skinny. So it is going to be a super skinny, long scarf, but look at the color. I've got one section of pink in it, just a really like blush colored pink. And there's with different shades of gray. Very pretty. I actually think this, my mom might like this. So maybe she may get this for Christmas. So it's very nice and soft. The test is going to be, I didn't do a swatch and wash it, but that's what I'm really curious about. Um, let's see how it stands up. Hopefully it will be, hopefully it'll stand up nice because this had some nylon in it, didn't it? If I remember correctly, 
let me see. Kissy Kiss is the Kissy Kissy is the colorway. 58 acrylic, 42% nylon. I think the nylon's what's giving it that kind of silky feel. And what does it say? Wash, wash and dryable. That's good. I don't know. We'll have to test it out and see it. But it's really nice to knit with. Feels nice in the in the fluffiness, doesn't distort your stitches to the point where you can't see what, what your knits and pearls are. So it's I like it. Oh, let me show you. I didn't show you how exactly how much I knit this week. There was my marker. I got all the pink done, all the gray, and into the dark gray. And again, it's the mistake rib pattern. Really easy. Knit two, purl two, offset on the next row. Super easy. Again, one of those ones you don't have to count rows. You don't have to tick off um, anywhere where you are in the pattern. It's just a one row. Just repeat on and on and on. So it's a good, it's a good, it's a fun one. You know I've done that because I do, I've done a lot of them. Okay, what will I show you next? We'll do the dishcloth. Let's do the dishcloth. So, in continuing with my dishcloth quest, and I'm thinking, you know, this could be expanded. It doesn't just have to be a dishcloth. It could be, you know, these could be blanket squares. They could be um, a blanket, right? I mean, I'm doing them kind of eight, well, I don't know. My dishcloths are kind of varying in sizes. I got some bigger, some smaller, but... When I write up the pattern, I'm gonna give you the, um, the, the um, not the stitch count, but the multiple of stitches plus whatever you need. So then you can vary it and you can make it as big as you want. So if you wanted to do like a 12 inch square for a, um, like a blanket, like this would be a, a great blanket square too, right? Do them in multiple colors or add in some different texture, different, different patterns, squares in there. So I guess even though I'm saying I'm looking for like this quest for the favorite dishcloth pattern, it's really a block pattern for a dishcloth, Afghan squares. I mean, this would be great as a pillow. This would be great knit huge and just do like a, ba a baby blanket or a full size Afghan. Options are pretty limited. I mean, unlimited, not limited. You've got wide variety. <laughs> Anyways. Let me show you what I started for this week. I just grabbed again, another ball that does not have a ball band. It's just a part ball. So I'm not gonna get a full dishcloth out of here. So I think I'm going to stripe it. I've got a little chunk done of the white and I've got two shades of blue that I eventually wanna work in to get those finished and get those ball bands into my box. So this is another one of my favorite stitch patterns. And I had never thought to do this for a dishcloth, but I think it would make a great dishcloth because it's really nice and sturdy. It knits up tightly. Herringbone. Can you see that stitch? So I did again, I did two rows of garter stitch on the bottom. I added two rows of garter on both sides just to get a little bit of a, a border on there. And there again, if you're one, if you're a person who really, really loves doing a slip stitch, you can, you can go ahead and do the slip stitch on there, you know, make it your own. But look at that. You can cut, you can start to see the zigzagging of the herringbone. And this might even be easier than the garter slip because it's only two rows. There's, yeah, so you really, well, I don't want to say I can't really mess this up because we all know that's, <laughs> that's part of knitting, messing, you know, it's easy enough, but there's one row you do on the front side. So this is a knit, it's a slip, yarn over, knit, pass stitch over on the right side, on the back side, it is your purling two together and purling the first stitch again, and you work that away, all the way across and then work your edge stitches. Really, really easy. So this is definitely going in my, my collection of really easy stitch patterns to do. Look at that, I love herringbone. I don't know why I never thought to do it in dishcloth cotton or do it as a dishcloth. I mean, this could be, it's almost, it's not, well, I don't know, it's thick. 
So it might make, I was going to say a pot holder. I don't know. Maybe it's not quite that thick, but it's nice. Super easy. I'm really liking it. Really liking it. So I'm going to work on that. I'll show you the finished one next week. And if anybody's interested, I'll probably write this one up as well. I've done this pattern. I really like this herringbone. There's a few different stitch patterns for. I like this version because it is so easy. I will probably play around with the other ones eventually too because I like herringbone. So I want to try them all out. But I really like this one. And I love my cute little bag. That was a gift from one of our viewers. Perfect size for my dishcloth. And it's a drawstring. And you just listen. I just love the sound. I can, that never gets old for me. Okay, moving on. Dishcloths, what else? That was my new start dishcloth for this week. So my other new start is just barely started. As in, it is just a couple rows on a gauge swatch. But if you didn't see the other video where I went to Michael's, I had told you, I think in last week's video, I was talking about the Karen cakes and the latte cakes and how there was like so many different Karen cakes out there that had come out since I had first started collecting all my Karen cakes. I didn't realize they were in like skinny, which is a, a DK weight and there was chunky and there's swirls and there's, oh, I don't know. There's all kinds of latte cakes. So, and I had said that I had seen the anniversary cake and it was huge but I didn't show you a picture of it. So I went back, took you on a little tour of some of the different Karen cakes that my local Michaels had. And then of course I had to come home with one of the Karen cake balls. This is called, the colorway is Cookie Parade. And I just liked it because I thought, well, as you can see, <laughs> I wear a lot of black and gray. So I thought this would be totally totally the most wearable for me. There was another one that I'm still thinking about. It was called Peach Partay and it was oranges with like a raspberry color, kind of like, uh, which way? This color here. It was really fun. It was bright. I may go back and get that. And there was also one with yellow and browns, which I kind of really like too. So you know me, there'll be more coming home in the future, but this one is what I went with first. I'm going to make a sweater out of this. There should be enough yardage in here. We'll just quickly go over this again. So it says it is a number six bulky weight and three and a half ounces. What is, no, th three and a half, 35.3 ounces, 35 ounces and 1000 grams. So I'm thinking there's enough yardage in here for me to get a sweater. I'm hoping. I think there should be. I mean, they're definitely, I mean, I have to do for myself, I have to do with the larger sizes. So if, um, you know, if you're, if you're able to do a smaller size for you, you'll definitely get a sweater out of there. This is what I, <laughs> this counts as a new start, right? Cause there's stitches on my needle. I've done a cast on and I think two rows, but enough to feel that I, I like the feel of the yarn. It's a hundred percent acrylic. So if acrylic yarn is something that, you know, you're looking for so in my very limited knitting with this so far, I'm liking it. I'm doing my cheater in the round gauge swatch right now. Um, all of a sudden I just thought, I'm like, Hmm, am I going to do this sweater in the round? I think I will I think, I think this one I will do. I've got a few ideas for some sweater designs coming up. Not all of them are in the round, but I think this one will be. So what I'm doing is I am knitting across and then doing like a big I cord. I'm not turning my work. So I always have the knit side facing me and I'm just pulling my working yarn really loosely across the back. So it's not going to pull or distort my actual knitted fabric. And then I just start knitting again because when you, when I'm knitting in the round, there won't be any purl stitches. So I don't want any purl stitches in my gauge swatch. This does feel really nice. It feels really nice and soft. I like how it feels. It's easy to knit with. So far, it doesn't seem to be splitting. Now my needles are not super pointy. They're pretty blunt, which usually helps not split the yarn. 
Yeah. Okay. So I went with a seven and a half millimeter needle on the ball band. They, they suggest an eight millimeter, but I always knit loose. So I always go down a size and I thought this would be a good starting point. And I think I like, I think I like, it's not too tight. And I don't know, I'll have to do obviously, obviously some more. I'm going to do my gauge to garment process. So I don't actually have to get this to a certain stitch count for the sweater to fit. I've taken my measurements already. Once I get a fabric that I look the, the look of and the feel of, I will measure and I will get my stitches per inch. I'll measure over four inches and then divide it down to the inch to get super accurate. And then I will multiply it by my chest measurement and I think that's what I'm going to cast on I'm no I won't I don't want to get too crazy with this because I think it might be kind of close for yardage so one of my sweater designs I'm thinking about is going to be a line so that would mean casting on more and then working decreases all the way up the side but not this one because I want to see if I can get a sweater out of this one ball so, and I wear like an, an extra large. So that's kind of what I want to see. If an extra large size can be done out of one of these balls, that would be kind of cool because this ended up being just like $34 with the coupon and then taxes and all that. So pretty economical if you can knit yourself a sweater for $34. The other thing I was going to, um, to talk about was I had said this was you know, it said it's a super bulky and I was, and I looked at it and I'm like, does that look super bulky? To me, it, it didn't. So I pulled it. The one benefit of having my yarn organized is that I actually have my bulky weight yarn here. So I pulled out three samples of super bulky yarn. So these all say they are a number six as well as this one. This is the, this is the Karen Cakes. <clears throat> Anyways, I thought, I'm thinking, to me, it's a number six super bulky seemed thicker than that. So I pulled this one out. This is a Bernat, the Bernat Twisted. And that's, I'm thinking, okay, that doesn't look really super bulky, does it? I'm going to have a yarn avalanche here trying to hold everything. I don't know. Maybe those are pretty close. But then, this is more what I was thinking was like a super bulky. These two. These to me look thicker. Especially the gray. And when you hold them up to the Karen cake, it really... <laughs> I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a tangled yarn mess here but okay can we <laughs> okay can we do this does the middle one is the Karen cake I'm gonna hold them up having two gray yarns here is not helping me either anyways I guess they're fairly close. But to me, that white looks thicker. And this gray looks even thicker still. When you look at them like that, does the top one is the Karen cake and it definitely looks thinner. I don't know. They're all on the ball bands. This one here, this thick gray one, it's a Mary Maxim quick. Um, bulky. It's a number six. And does it see, and it is suggesting this big one for Mary Maxim, it's suggesting a 10 to 11 millimeter. So obviously there's some variation between what a number six super bulky weight is. Anyways. That's that. I was, I was just got on a little tangent there thinking, <sighs> yeah, who, I, I, anyways, read your ball bands, I guess, go by needle size. Maybe that is our little lesson for today is 
I, I guess they're going to know the weight of the yarn. Maybe a six is pretty, like, is there, I think there are yarns that are a seven, but what are they? Oh, I happen to have a seven right here. Holy, this is like, this is hu huge. Don't ask me what I'm doing with this. I just, I don't know. It was yellow. I liked it. And I did have, I did have a plan not to wear, not as a garment, but for something else. Okay, so a number seven is called Jumbo. And what, guys? A 25 millimeter needle. Okay, that is like a massive jump from a number six weight to a seven weight. And obviously, look at that. So I guess that's why they've kind of clumped anything that is smaller than this, but not a five. They kind of clumped all as a six. So anyway, I guess, yeah, so what we're learning here, as I'm thinking, my thought process here, six can be, I guess you've got a lot of leeway in there. Something from a, a six and a half millimeter needle, or um, what did they say, an eight up to a ten. Anyway, have I just confused everybody more? I think I've just confused myself more. Anyways, make an educated guess. Go by the ball band, use that as a starting point and just see what you like. This, I'm back to the Karen Cake Anniversary Yarn. They suggested an eight millimeter for the six super bulky. I went down to a 7.5 because I'm loose. And I think I like that. It's a, yeah. I definitely don't want to go any bigger just with the stretch. You want something for, you want it to have good bounce back. For a sweater, so it will hold its shape. So I may play around with a couple of different sizes because I always think with gauge, you may think you like one size, but you really need something to compare it to. So I may, I may just, I may go down a size, but then depending on, if, then you're going to get into using more yarn too. Oh, you know what? Well, I was going to say, I could go buy, I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I wanted to go buy another ball of this yarn to finish the sweater if I needed to, except both the Michaels here in London are sold out of this colorway already. Anyways, I will play around. I will swatch, I will measure, and I will come up with a decision. And that is it for this week. What are you guys working on this week? Are you, ca anybody casting on anything new? Does anybody have the Karen Cake yarn? I know a couple of people do. Some people have left me messages saying, some people have said they've seen it, but left it there. And I know the price tag is like for something at Michael's and for Karen Cakes, it seems expensive because the um, the price on the ball of yarn is $40, $39.99. And you think that's expensive. But when you work out the the, the meters in it, it does work. It, it's a, it works out to be a good deal. So that I think is that. I think that's all I have to share with you. This coming weekend is a long weekend. So what I really want to do is save this Karen Cakes ball for the long weekend. I have got, I've got a four day weekend and I'd like to see how much of this sweater I can get done in those four days. So stay tuned. I'm sure I'll be posting pictures on Instagram of what what my progress is, is, and uh, we'll see. Bulky weight yarn, sweater, can it be done in four days? I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. I think I'll cast on Thursday night. That'll give me a few extra hours. <laughs> Thursday night, and I'll have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and we'll see, because then I'll be right back here again on Monday, and I'll show you how far I've gotten. This is the start. From here to next Monday, will there be a finished sweater? We'll wait and see. Have a great week. Enjoy your long weekend, everybody. I will be back here again on the weekend because I'm going to be doing some more organizing. I'm going to be working over here. This stuff here is going to go. Most of it, a lot of it is going to go. This is going to be, this is going to end up being my, my worsted weight yarn over the start of it. I think I'll start collecting my patents classic wool and put it on these shelves. Happy knitting, everybody. And I will see you right back here in the next video.